Osis, Hear Them Speak by Kay Winters, illustrated by Larry Day. We'll take a look at the setting, what it looked like in Boston during the Boston Massacre, American Revolution. This is Ethan in the print shop. That's where they print newspapers. The Errand Boy. Today is December 16, 1773. Boston is about to explode. I'm Ethan, paper boy for the printer, messenger, woodchopper, runner of errands. My mother died when I was born. My father drowned at sea. Now I sleep above the print shop, live by my wits. No one times my comings and goings. Errand boys, like servants, are almost invisible. It's a good cloak to wear. I keep my eyes and ears alert, and troubles brewing. The Dartmouth, the Eleanor, the Beaver, crammed with tea, wait at Griffin's Wharf. Will King George and Parliament have their way? Will their custom men collect the tax? Will the tea company say who sells the tea? Let them try. The sons of liberty are counting on me. Off I go to slip in and out of shops and houses. Share the notice about the final meetings at Old South. Pass the secrets to the patriots. And listen to the tittle-tattle from the loyalists. Midnight is the deadline when the tea must go or be taxed. What will happen now? The Printer I am the printer. My job is to keep folks informed. I write, edit, compose the type, operate the press. When my husband and I open our small shop, news of the king's birthday, missing cows, runaway slaves, filled our paper. How times have changed. I am a widow now, but I keep the press rolling. First, Parliament passed the Stamp Act. Then, British soldiers occupied our town. Citizens were shot. I told each tale. Now Parliament and King George III have done it again. The Terrible Tea Act. Taxes to pay without any say. Unfair, cried the patriots. But what do the loyalists want and those who are in between? I've done my part. Published the paper, printed the notice of today's meeting. Governor Hutchinson is the one who must decide whether the tea ship stay or go. What will the governor do? The Baker. The big brick oven heats the room until we swelter, but bakes the bread with thickened crust the town folk crave. I sift flour into a wooden trowel and stir the batch. My apprentice needs a hundred pounds with burly arms and practiced hands. Slowly the dough bubbles and rises. Like liberty, I say. Here's Ethan making his rounds. He hands me a notice and shares the secret from the Sons of Liberty. King George may be surprised by what we do. I wink and give the boy a loaf to feed him on his way. The apprentice sweeps the ashes from the oven floor. I slide new loaves in on my wooden peel, shut the iron door, and close the damper. As darkness fades from morning sky, a yeasty smell perfumes the air. A new day, fresh bread for sale. The Mistress of the Dame School The kitchen is my schoolroom. When sun is up, the children come to do their lessons. They join my Charlotte, Paul, and baby Benjamin. Abigail and Daniel bring firewood part of my pain. Matthew, John, and Hannah have horn books around their necks. I start the day by reading from the Bible. Then we say rhymes to learn the letters A to Z. Paul's face turns red 
when we all chant, F, fool, the idle fool is whipped at school. Yesterday, he poked Daniel during spelling. I didn't whip him, but I made him wear the whispering sticks all afternoon. Who comes? It's Ethan with news about today. I asked the scholars to repeat the time and place. Back to our books. We read aloud. Abigail knows the words. We clap. My heart sings. A special day were it not for those three tea ships lurking in the harbor. King George does not give up, but nor do we. The Shoemaker. Customers crowd my shop. Walking wear soles thin. I never want for work. I measure the length of the foot, whittle the wooden last, mark it with my customer's name. Two pieces of leather make the upper, one for the toe and one for the heel. I punch holes in the top for leather string or silver buckles. Then cut and stitch the sole. Left or right, I make the same. The wearer switches every day. Sometimes I pull a throbbing tooth for him who has an aching mouth, an extra charge, but always I listen as I work. I do not share my views, don't want to lose my customers who defer, but times are changing. This tea tax must not be paid. Meeting today? My teeth are worn from so much clenching. Mayhap the time has come to take a stand. The Milliner. I sell the latest fripperies in my shop. Lace, fans, hat, velvet shoes, a scarlet cloak, silk flowers, fabric, beaded purses, muffs, and mitts. Ladies look at me for fashion in these troubled times. I can make old look new by dyeing silk from pink to red or freshen last year's gown by rubbing stains with bread. My ladies ask, this season will the petticoat show? The shoe buckles twinkle with gems. Are cuffs of lace a nosegay at the waist? What stylish woman wear in England or in France? And once the patriots come to their senses, my customers will sip tea in fragile cups while they chitter-chatter over shapes of skirts. What do you say? Another meeting at Old South about that tiny tax? I say pay it. Count your blessings. I prefer the king to a rabble rousing mob. No meeting for me or any of my kin will be unpacking pretties for the shop. The Basket Trader. My ancestors and I were here for many moons before strangers stepped upon our shores. They bring sickness we cannot cure, make promises they do not keep. They turn our trails into roads for carriages and carts, claim land, plant fields, build cities and towns. They shoot our fowl, catch our fish, stalk our hunting ground, force us to move on. Now they quarrel with each other, like wearing tribes, and over tea? We will not fight their battle. It matters not who wins or loses. Our people have already lost. I do not live in town, but come and go to the tavern to help make soap or candles. I barter willow baskets for kettles, needles, knives, my moccasins walk between two worlds. I pray I will not stumble. The Tavern Keeper Since my husband died, I am mistress of this place. I cannot let my sorrow show. A gloomy landlady loses custom. I smile and take the traveler up the stairs to see the bed he'll share with strangers. My daughter serves the table where guests gather. They toast the king, sit, sup, then share their views. 
They bring the news from whence they've come. The town folk tarry, read the paper, talk of tea, taxes, and today. I won't be there. We should be thankful to get that English tea, I say. Such a tempest. I check the chicken, stir the soup, taste the turnips, prod the cook, clean the counter, plan the menu. My husband taught me well. Cash is what I take for bed and board. Trust is not the innkeeper's friend.